This week's LGBT plus history focuses on section 28. In 1988, Margaret Thatcher would introduce the controversial section 28 legislation to the UK. This would lead to protests across the country. Now, let's get into the history. In 1967, homosexuality for men over 21 became decriminalised in England and Wales. Homosexual behaviour between adult consenting males in private should no longer be a criminal offence. In 1980, Scotland would decriminalise homosexuality, followed by Northern Ireland in 1982. Activists, after the decriminalisation, began to make steps towards acceptance and equality. This saw activists start alliances with labour unions and the National Union of Mine Workers, as well as the election of Margaret Roth, Britain's first out lesbian mayor, in Manchester in 1985. The first UK Gay Pride Parade would be held on the 1st of July 1972. In 1979, Margaret Thatcher would become the first woman Prime Minister of the UK. As the AIDS and HIV crisis began to sweep across the UK, Homophobia was on the rise, spurred on by hostile coverage of the epidemic in the right-wing press. This atmosphere encouraged Thatcher to promote anti-gay rhetoric. At the time, 75% of the population thought that homosexual activity was, was always or mostly wrong. I obviously don't want children taught that the gay and lesbian lifestyle is natural or normal. It is not, it never has been and it never will be. In 1987, Thatcher voiced her opposition to gay rights at the Conservative Party conference in Blackpool. Children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an inalienable right to be gay. All of those children are being cheated of a sound start in life. Yes, cheated. In December 1987, Clause 28 was introduced into the local government bill by Dame Jill Knight, a Conservative MP for Birmingham. It provoked an immediate outrage among gay rights campaigners and many teachers. So what was Section 28? Section 28 banned the promotion of homosexuality by local authorities and in Britain schools. In practice, the clause banned teachers from even discussing the idea of same-sex relationships with students. In May 1988, the legislation would become Section 28 when the bill passed into law. This would be the first law of discrimination to be introduced in a century in the UK. Now the rest of the news. The government is to ban the promotion of homosexuality in schools. Councils became forbidden from stocking libraries with literature or films that contained gay or lesbian themes. The law was met by outrage by the LGBT plus community, leading to a variety of protests across the country. On the day the section came to pass, free lesbian protesters would abseil from the public gallery of the House of Lords to the chamber below. The stump made national news and helped draw attention to their cause. Their actions would be commemorated in 2017 with an unofficial blue plaque being placed at Parliament by a group calling themselves the Sexual Avengers. Activists also stormed the BBC on the 23rd of May 1988 handcuffing themselves to a TV camera and disrupting a broadcast of the 6 o'clock news presented by Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. It's at 6 o'clock. In the House of Lords, a vote is taking place now on a challenge to the poll tax. Tory rebels have said that the tax... Sue Lawley apologised and continued to broadcast. Out of vision, her co-presenter Nicholas Witchell and other BBC staff restrained the protesters. Outside the studio, one woman who'd handcuffed herself to camera cables was cut free. Thank you very much. Another and the piece of studio furniture she'd handcuffed herself to were parted in a corridor. Led away, the women repeated their protest. In Manchester, more than 20,000 people marched against Section 28. This included actor Ian McKellen, who came out publicly for the first time in order to voice his opposition for the law. Uh, we all have to come out against Section 28. Uh, if you have to abseil into the House of Lords, do that. This law will play a huge role in legitimising hate and reinforcing playground homophobia and bullying, demonising LGBT plus children and ensuring many people didn't come out for fear of social reprisals or disapproval. I very much felt like I had nowhere to turn at school um, and so it was something that I was feeling before Section 28 came in and that just almost felt like well, this seals the deal, you're, 
you are this disgusting um, pervert that we're told um, about in the newspapers. Talking about homosexuality, you could be accused of promoting it. Simply um, talking to somebody as homosexual, you could be accused of promoting it if you talk about their needs. The law also led in party fighting in the Conservative Party. In 1999, Conservative leader William Hague controversially sacked frontbencher Sean Woodward for refusing to support the party line for Section 28's retention. 2000 saw gay Conservative advisor Ivan Mazow defect to the Labour Party in response to the Conservatives' continued support of Section 28. On February 7, 2000, the first attempted legislation to repeal Section 28 was introduced by the Labour government as part of the Local Government Act 2000 but was defeated by the House of Lords campaign led by Baroness Young. The then Shadow Education Secretary and current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Theresa May, called the defeat a victory for common sense. Despite the protest, the law remained until it was repealed in Scotland on the 21st of June 2001. The Scottish millionaire businessman Brian Souter privately funded a postal ballot as part of his Keep the Clause campaign, which returned an apparent 86% support for keeping the clause. However, it was shown the ballot at a very small base of the Scottish population actually returning it. On the 18th of November, the law would be repealed in the rest of the UK. On July 1st, 2009, the then Conservative leader and Prime Minister, David Cameron, apologised for Section 28, calling it a mistake. Despite the law no longer being in place, its effects are still having an impact. Research by Stonewall shows that just 13% of pupils say they have been taught about how to be part of a healthy same-sex relationship as part of their sex ed. You can go into schools now and there will be teachers who are still afraid to talk about lesbian and gay issues. Their assumption that it's not appropriate, that it's not acceptable, that it's not legal is still there.